Welcome back to another episode of New England Beer Buddies with Mark and Garrett. Um, today we're going to be trying a couple of beers from Connecticut breweries. Um, up to this point, we our previous episode is, is Rhode Island, um, so we're kind of rounding out New England with this one. Um, up until this point, we are, have been a little light on, on Rhode Island and Connecticut specifically. Uh, don't see it quite as much in stores up in our areas, but it is it is doable you, you do see some um, varieties there so um, want to give them a little credit um, so I stopped by Lazy Dog Beer Shop up in London Dairy they have a solid selection and the first one where we're trying from a Connecticut brewery in this show is this um, Hopman New England style IPA which is from the Connecticut Valley Brewing Company in South Windsor Connecticut um, so we'll see what we think. It's going to be uh, a new one for both myself and Mark, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and this particular brewery is, is certainly new to me as well. So um, we'll see what we think, but uh, I'm sure I won't be disappointed. I know there's certainly a craft beer culture there as well. Oh, I have a little too much foam. Let me just let that settle down for a bit. I know there's certainly craft brew um, culture in those states as well. I know New England as a whole is big on it. Looks like I probably shook this up a little bit. Let's apologize for that. Um, get quite the head on it and that's not, I'm sure that's not correct. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if we should let this settle down or do a different pour. Uh, I think maybe just let it settle down for a bit and, uh, you know, we can, uh, we can cut it because I feel it eventually it'll get back to but yeah, it is something that's a bit of an annoyance when that happens. So right off the bat, we do have a very clear, uh, oh, not clear in terms of free of haze, actually. You can see some sediment in there. It's very unfiltered. I can actually see it, uh, you know, dropping, you know, rising and falling in there. I can yeah. see, some, see some stuff. Uh, it's probably partially my fault from, from moving it around uh, poorly, I suppose, but... Um, We'll just pour a little more of this and then let it settle out and uh, see if we have to cut somewhere. Okay, so we just had a bit of a cut there with some technical difficulties, uh, mostly relating to foam. Uh, one thing we noticed while we were pouring this beer is there's a lot of activity still, a lot of sediment, which I know can happen in some, some pretty hoppy beers. Um, it seemed a lot more than, than what we'd normally expect, but... Um, Things have settled down a bit now in these two, so we're gonna give it a whirl and see what we think. Mm -hmm. um, cheers. Cheers. Yeah. So I've... you can probably see plenty of floaty stuff moving up and down right now. Tastes perfectly fine to me. Yeah. Um, but it is very, very hazy. I don't know if this is really normal. Uh, so to speak, or, or what they expect. I mean, I don't see much of a problem with it yeah. taste-wise, but yeah. it's just a little disconcerting, I guess. It's, it's yeah. just strange to look at. <laughs> yes, I mean, we looked at the Enjoy By date on the can, and it's and, um, it was said Enjoy By 612, mm -hmm. and as we're recording it, it's the 27th, so two weeks after the Enjoy By really shouldn't make a difference. Right. Um, I, I mean, I don't think so, because I, I usually hear, you know, something like, you know, that's just kind of like sort of the, a very conservative estimate. It should still be fine. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I do, it doesn't taste bad. The one thing I say it's, and you can tell it's an, it's an IPA. Um, it's, I feel in some ways like it feels a little bit, I don't know if maybe it's some of the crispness of the flavor it's lost. I feel it's a bit more, I don't know. I just feel like you get like a bit of, you get the hoppiness, but I feel almost like it, it's almost like trying to be a bit more on the, the uh, like a, a fruity New England IPA, but I don't get mm -hmm. too much terms of that. Right, and uh, to me it's a bit flat, but that could very easily be the the pour that you saw earlier, just really taking all the all the carbonation out of it. But mm -hmm. hmm. yeah, it's really not in terms of I. I hate to say say it for our, you know, I think our first not totally negative review here, but um, 
it it seems to not quite hit the mark on the New England IPA for yeah. me at least. Um, it's certainly an IPA, but um, whether they actually nailed the New England style, I I might beg to differ. Um, of course, if we come back and we you know mm-hmm. I have a few more of these cans, so you know we might issue a redaction with the or a correction in a note with the final video if, if mm-hmm. we think differently by the end of it. But um, I think they they kind of missed the mark on the traditional New England IPA style a little bit and um it really is a lot of it's just visually strange the, yes. the, the level of haziness and float floaty floaty bits in here yeah um yeah well the haziness i mean it's usually fine but you usually the particles are that are, make it hazy are so small you can't really notice them you just right. notice like oh i i can't see my fingers through it but for this one and you can kind of see the shadow of your fingers through it but it is you just see these big chunks um you know, it is something you see in like bottle uh, conditioned beers. Um, it's usually something you see a lot more in like European styles or something. Mm-hmm. It's like they'll say, oh, there's sediment in this and you're, you know, and you generally you try not to pour that in. But if you do, it's, you know, it's OK, if you, you know, to drink the sediment or whatever. But yeah, this is definitely it's more I have seen this before on, on different beers and it's, it's also it's tough because we really don't know what the what it's supposed to taste like if it is really fresh. We don't know if it's supposed right. to look like this. So I do kind of wonder if maybe this is something that's maybe a little if if it wasn't you know transported correctly or perhaps yeah, yeah or if it wasn't you know kept cold for long enough or something. But um, I mean again, it's like we said. I mean it doesn't taste horrible. You know it's yeah no it tastes perfectly perfectly acceptable. Uh, you know. Not, not quite the normal New England, but still definitely a, a, a solid yeah. IPA. But yeah. um, so we'll, I guess we'll I'll post back to you uh, by the time I edit this video and, and get it up there. Basic, I'll make sure to put a little note and we can comment on whether this is uh, normal or not. But um, mm-hmm. overall, flavor-wise, uh, I'm okay with it. It's a, it's you know a little shy of the New England style IPA, it's just more of a standard IPA to me. Yeah. Um, but other than that, uh, it's a solid beer and we'll, we'll let you know about this little floaty thingy uh, so that was connecticut valley brewing company um the next one we're going to have up is from two roads so we're just going to break here and uh we'll come back with those in just a moment yeah all right we're back from talking about the connecticut brewing Co- valley brewing company Hopman. uh so we're moving on to the next one which is the two roads accelerator um, so this is a double block um, that we're going to give a whirl. Of course, these are in 12 ounce cans, so we're just going to kind of pour our own um, and let you know what we think. I know this was, um, I looked up a list of Connecticut breweries before I went to the store just so I'd recognize some names in order to, you know, hopefully find out which ones were Connecticut without having to, you know, turn every can on the shelf, so to speak. And, and this definitely came up um, multiple multiple times so um hopefully that hopefully that bodes well um and this is let's see where are they from they're from stratford connecticut um just for your reference there and so let's uh give this double block a try yep cheers cheers That's, that, really that's, good. that's really good. I, I, I'm impressed. Um, yep. Sorry. Definitely uh, spot on with the style. Uh, very, like a almost creamy uh, yes. b- body to it. Um, mm. uh, very hearty beer. And, yes. Uh, uh, we've reviewed a few Doppelbachs on the show before, and this yep. is as good as uh, uh, any of them, I'd say. Absolutely. Really, really nice. Um, that's definitely one of the reasons I grabbed it. I know we're doing a lot of the Germans lately, so I thought while we're trying to hit all of New England, we could also kind of, you know, stay in the, stay in the German theme. But mm-hmm. uh, I'm very impressed, actually. I, yeah. I can't say enough good things right off the bat. Yeah. Uh, they've done a very solid job with this, and uh, I'm definitely going to keep my eye out for, for more stuff uh, yeah. from them if this is any, any indicator. Again, this is a, a new one to me. Um, you know, I hadn't really, I haven't had too, too many Connecticut yeah. um, craft beers, um, but Two Roads as a whole is new to me. Um, but definitely it seems that they're worth checking out. 
Yes, I believe I've had a um, a Hefweizen by them recently that I also mm. thought was pretty good. Um, but yeah, this is a really nice option. Uh, I mean, it's got the really nice kind of, uh, this is more, I guess, of a dark amber color. It has a nice malty sweetness. It's just a, a, a really nice, solid beer. Um, you know, again, like you were saying, kind of just a heavy, hearty type of beer that's, you know, really good to enjoy after, you know, a day of like, you know, doing yard work or something like that. Absolutely, and I, I will say it has a little bit of that stickiness, but not, not a ton. So it has yeah. that creamy texture with a little bit of stickiness on the back end, but I know some browns I really don't like. They get kind of like over the top, particularly when they have like maples and things like yeah. that in them. You get that like stickiness that like just stays with, you know, coats your mouth and stays mm -hmm. with you for too long. There's a little bit of it um, to kind of have that little lip smacking kind of thing, but mm -hmm. it, it goes, oh, I bumped my mic, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, but it kind of goes right away. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, definitely well done by them. and. Um, you mentioned it was a Hefeweizen yes. for yours as well, so I'm curious then, um, as I keep my eye out for more two roads, I wonder if they're another one that does a lot of the German styles. Yes. I know we only are working off of a sample of, of two here between those two beers, but yeah. I wonder if they're similar to like Schilling in that regard, where they do a right. lot of those styles. Mm -hmm. uh, if so, I'd definitely be, be interested in, in adding you know, some of those to the lineup as well. I don't think you could go wrong with this one. Um, we were chatting a little bit off camera on the, the last the last one, the Connecticut Valley Brewing Company. Um, we thought uh, it maybe a little bit, not skunked, that, that wouldn't be the right word for it, but that was maybe a little bit flatter, um, which probably was related to my pour, um, but that there was something, a, a little bit of weird aftertaste, yeah. kind of, so um, definitely, I'll, I'll link it somewhere in the video, I'll, I'll type it out, but I'm going to give it another shot uh, before we kind of write them off as well um, mm -hmm. in that in that regard. And hopefully it was just something, you know, odd with that one can or, mm -hmm. or that one batch. And even if I have the other ones, we have the same problem. We still don't know that that's a, a knock on them as a whole. So yeah. please don't take it that way, um, mm -hmm. but we'll just, we'll do our best to, to let you know what we find. Yeah. Um, other than that, I, I don't really have too much on these. Um, the only thing I'd say is, you know, if you're if you're down in Connecticut and Stratford, check out Two Roads for sure. Oh yeah. And um, as always, I like to say, drink good beer. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers.